Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to be installing this secondary solar panel and adding it to our solar charging system. So, if you're interested in learning how to install a solar panel on your RV rooftop or add an additional solar panel to your system, integrating it to a previously already solar power system, this is the video for you. So stick around and check it out. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to map out where we want our solar panel to fit. Again, you wanna make sure it's in an area that's not gonna get a lot of shade, it'll get a lot of direct sunlight, and that it's mounted in a secure location on your rooftop. So what I'm gonna do is I pre-planned out this system when I installed the first panel. I uh, waited until I had more funds to get a second panel, and now that I have, I am going to install it exactly in the same location on the other side of the roof with the same distances and square to this solar panel one so it gives a nice clean solar look up here but also so that i can continue to add things if need be in the future so let's do the first thing and get this thing situated on some trusses so that we make sure that our mount screws go into the truss in your roof and not just into some hollow wood um, where it has a more chance of causing damage from high speeds in the highway, wind, etc., moving around on that thin piece of uh, plywood that's on top of your roof. All right, so I'm gonna get into that now. So I previously already marked out my trusses. I've got one here. I also have one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align these holes on the forward portion of this one um, with this truss and I should have a exact same bite back here on this truss here so these my trusses are I believe 32 on center is what I remember don't quote me on that but again you can use a good stud finder to find your trusses in your roof and then you go from there so since I already know where my trusses are the important thing that I need to do is make sure that I get this thing square and also even with the measurements I have on that side. So let's go ahead and start with that. First thing I'm going to do, since I don't remember what the measurement was, let's come over here. All right. So it looks like it's 19 inches is what I used off the edge of that seam, that roof over there. So let's go ahead and get this baby back on the truss and go 19 inches on the front and back. So what I'll do is I'll get them both to 19, make sure they're at 19, then I will come back and re-square the front one a second time make sure it is also still at 19 because as you move one the other will move and repeat this process until I know both of these are at 19 all right so now 19 inches away from the edge on this one 19 inches from the edge on this one Solar panels are about 19 inches apart. And then again, 19 inches here. Everything's looking good and square. Now I just want to make sure that I am on that. Yep, good there, good there. Now that I have my solar panel sat down, I want to mark out where my feet are, as well as where I need to drill, pre-drill my holes. So I'll get these marked out now. And on my previous video, I did have a comment about 
well, why are you pre-drilling your hole if you have a self-tapping um, roofing um, screw? The reason I pre-drill the holes is one, because I know the bits that I'm using are sharp and nice. The second thing, I, reason I do it for is I don't want that not very precise um, pre-drill, or uh, I'm sorry, not very precise self-tapping um, screw to tear up my RV roof liner, causing me more issues and possible leaks. So what I'll do is I'll have a nice new sharp drill bit. I will make it smaller than the um, self-tapping screws bit so that it will start the hole and pre-drill it and then the self-tapper will finish off the hole and grab into the ceiling. I highly recommend you pre-drill. Uh, I try to pre-drill almost anything I do, even if it is self-tapping, just because you know your drill bit is sharp, uh, especially if you make sure that your drill bit is sharp. Don't just go grab a dull one. But you know it's sharp, and if you go a little smaller, you have room for mistakes, and then you can actually use that um, self-tapper to correct anything that may go wrong instead of having that big old self-tapper actual size something goes wrong kicks a little bit and then your hole's too big and now you can't use it so yeah i always uh, pre-drill with a smaller bit another thing is the reason i am outlining these brackets is because i'm going to lay lap sealant down underneath this self-leveling lap here that die corp underneath these just like i did over here so I want to make sure that I know how much area I need to cover with that sealant before putting this panel down. And that's the reason I'm tracing the brackets as well. All right, now I've got all four corner, all four brackets marked out and all eight screw holes. Go ahead and move your solar panel out of the way. Now, another thing you want to do is make sure you have a clean surface before doing this. I have not cleaned the surface yet because, like I stated, I am going to be pre-drilling these holes. So what I'll do is I'm going to pre-drill them. And then any of the actual particles that come from the pre-drill, I'll be able to clean up as well as the surface. So let's get some pre-drilling done. Um, if you can see here is I have a tape marker that shows me how far down I want to go with the bit and stop. I don't want to accidentally drill all the way down through my ceiling inside. Now, as you can see on that first one, uh, it went down and didn't pop through. That's because I'm in the truss. Now this back one, of course, it can't be on the truss. It's not that wide. Pop through because that means that I wasn't on a truss. That is just your board. All right, so now I've got all four of my holes pre-drilled. The next step I'm going to do is I am going to clean this surface, get all this off, and then clean where the sealant's going to go lay my panel or uh, lay my lap sealant down and then I will lay my panel on top of the lap sealant and screw it down with my self-tapping roofing screws. So let's go ahead and get that started. Let's go ahead and use some just regular old soapy water. Just give it a nice wipe down. Now you want to make sure that your surface is dry before you put your lap sealant down. So I'll just spray it and wipe it and then throw your lap sealant down right on top of a moist surface. All right, like I said before, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my Dicor lap sealant. Again, all the links will be in the description below the video. So I'll have all this in there for you. And again, this is self-leveling, so this is also going to go on top of the bracket once the bracket is mounted and secure. And if you don't know this trick, 
Uh, anytime you've got some sort of sealant that you want to keep and protect, just take a wire nut and put it over the tip of your caulking nozzle and it will keep your caulk or your sealants from curing. Next step, let's go ahead and switch this bit out and get prepped for the self-tapping roofing screws. Okay, and this is a 3 8 self-tapping roofing screw. As you can see, it is self-tapping. It is a galvanized screw so that it doesn't rust. It also has a rubber uh, gasket made for roofing so that you don't get any leaks on top of all the extra preventatives I'm doing now. All right, got that ready. Let's get this panel over here. Now, make sure your wires are coming out where you want them to come out before you put your panel down. All right, we got our panel in place. Start with one corner on the stu on the truss. Come over to your other corner on the truss to make sure that your panel is square. And then finish off with the rest of your screws. Let's go to this one. And finish off on this truss. It looks like I'm short. I need to go grab two more. I must have miscounted. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I guess another good uh, point is to make sure that you have everything with you that you needed. I was short two of my roofing self-tapping screws. Now we are mounted down, lap seal underneath, but we also need lap sealant on these top of these bolts just to add an extra length added length of security but what we do want to do is we need to get this over to there with those so let's go ahead and get that done again these are just your standard mc4 connectors and what i'm going to utilize is an MC4 connector Y splitter for parallel wiring. So this has two females in and one male out. So what I'll do is I will unplug my male from the solar port and my female that I had before. And now we are gonna have the splitter on there. Here's the male, here's the two male ends, one female out to go over here. All right, make sure that your connections are the same. Red is male, red is male. So we know that those two are the same. And what I'm gonna do is plug that into here. And it looks like I'm going to need to extend my wiring. All right, well, now to teach you that you need to make sure you uh, get your wires laid out before. No big deal. I'm going to go make an extension cable. This is 10 gauge wire. So you just run a 10 gauge um, extension in here. And then we should be good to go. 
After that, I will finish off these panels by um, mounting all these down and then putting wire loom on all the wires to protect them. Uh, I did run out of wire loom on the last project, but while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and put some lap sealant on these bolt heads and we should be pretty much finished until I come back with that extension. Again, this is self-leveling lap sealant, so you just put a nice big glob on there around the bolt head and it will level down and around it to seal it in. Make sure you get all your edges covered and let that self-leveling lap sealant settle. And you should be good to go. Um, another thing I want to point out is that when it comes to your brackets, even though I didn't show you, I did it off camera, you need to make sure your, bra your brackets are also clean and ready for this job. So that is pretty much it. Just need to make that extension, clean up those wires, and now you have added an extra 100 watts of solar wire power to your system that simple not much to it very straightforward your wires are labeled uh, red and black red being positive black being negative makes just make sure that you know which way you're wiring them you can wire in parallel or you can wire in series if I hope you enjoyed this video make sure you click that like button and subscribe I have a lot more videos coming out um, in the RV world the boating world any kind of hobbies that you like to tinker and work on and do yourself to save you a little bit of money so that you can enjoy these hobbies more. I am the DIY Dude. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode.